All right, and last up for section 12.9, we're gonna look at problem number four on the worksheet. It says, consider the ellipse described by the vector function r of t, which is a cosine ti plus b sine tj, and here a and b are positive constants, and a is strictly greater than b. Okay, so first note that the i and the j components, thinking back to chapter 11, they give us parametric equations for this ellipse centered at the origin, and since A is strictly greater than B, this ellipse has semi-major axis A and semi-minor axis B. Okay, now part A of this question says, at what point is the curvature of the ellipse a minimum? How about a maximum? Answer this question by only considering the graph of this curve. Don't compute anything. Okay, so let's say I wanna know where the curvature is a maximum. Well, there I'm asking, where is the rate of change of the unit tangent vector's direction the greatest? So if you imagine driving along this road, okay, where are you gonna to have to turn your steering wheel the most? Well, that's gonna happen when we round this bend right here at a comma zero, and this bend over here at negative a comma zero. Okay, where would the curvature be a minimum? Okay, well, that's gonna happen when our curve is the flattest, and that's gonna happen up here at the top, right, with coordinate zero comma b, and at the bottom at zero negative b, okay? So we note that here. Max curvature at plus or minus a comma zero, and minimum curvature at zero comma plus or minus b. All right, now part b of the question says, compute the curvature of the ellipse using the formula Kappa equals the magnitude of V cross A over the magnitude of V cubed and verify your answers to part A. All right, so we'll go ahead and compute the velocity and the acceleration vectors as usual. And then I want the cross product of V and A. So I wanna compute this determinant and notice that your I and J components will be zero from these zeros right here. And then for the K component, we're gonna get a b sine squared of t minus a negative, so in other words, a plus a b cosine squared of t. So by the Pythagorean identity, that's just a b. So the k component is a b. And so when we compute the curvature, we want the magnitude of v cross a, which is just a b. And note here that a and b are both positive constants. So a b is a positive constants, we don't need an absolute value here. And then we're gonna divide by the magnitude of V cubed. Well, we note up here that the magnitude of V is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of the velocity vectors. So that's the square root of A squared sine squared T plus B squared cosine squared T. And I have that expression cubed in the denominator for my expression for uh, curvature, right? And so this all boils down to the following result. The curvature of this ellipse is AB over this quantity A squared sine squared T plus B squared cosine squared T, all of the three halves power. All right, now if we go ahead and sketch the curvature as a function of T, okay, we get something like this, okay? And notice here that the curvature is a maximum Okay, at multiples of pi, so zero, pi, two pi, and so forth. And at those values of t, right, at multiples of pi, okay, our i component is plus or minus a, and our j component is zero. So in other words, we're at this point, a zero, or at this point, negative a zero, okay? Now the curvature is a minimum, right, at odd multiples of pi over two. So at pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, so on and so forth. So that is when we're at the top and at the bottom. Okay, now here's another picture of the curvature as a function of t. Okay, so again, you see this uh, maximum at zero, this maximum at pi, two pi, and there's the minimums there. Okay, now notice here that if you play around with the value of say a and the value of b, okay, you get these interesting looking uh, curvature curves, right, this whole family of curves here. Now what happens if we let the value of b approach the value of a? Well, it appears that 
the curvature function's graph approaches a straight line. So there they're exactly equal, 5.7, and I just get a constant function. Okay, so what's going on there? Well, if you note here, as we let b approach a, okay, what is going to happen to this expression for our curvature? Well, I'm going to get an a squared up top, and then downstairs I'm going to get an a squared sine squared plus a squared cosine squared. Oh, well that by the Pythagorean identity is just a squared, and I have a squared then raised to the 3 halves power, and that's just a cubed. So all together I have a squared over a cubed. Ah, that's just 1 over a. Ah, but wait a minute. That is the curvature of a circle of radius a. And now thinking back to the, just the ellipse, if we're letting right, the semi-minor axis b approach the semi-major axis a, okay, the ellipse then right, will become a circle. And so this result right, agrees with our result on circles that we saw back in question number one. All right, great. Well, that's going to do it for this question and for this section. Thanks so much.